salamat po sa buhay at lakas na aming tagnay. Sa liwanag ng kaisipan at sa pagkakataon, maipagpatuloy ang pag-aaral ng mga kabataan. Gabay mo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ano man ang bahagi na aming gagampanan, naway maging maayos at matagumpay ang pagtuturo at pag-aaral na aming gagawin sa araw ng ito. Patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga pagkulang at pagkakasala. At sa aming pagawa, ikaw po ang aming makasama. Amen. A pleasant morning to you, class. Here we are again in another session on our subject, Understanding Culture, Society, and Politics. I am Sir Peter Simon D. Belisario from Punturin Senior High School, your live stream teacher for this day. For sure that we are all excited to learn new lesson today. Let us not get this introduction any longer. Let us start learning. To start this session, let us recall what has been discussed last meeting. You will answer the question presented on the next slides. This is the review of the previous lesson. Let's get started. For instruction, type capital T on the comment box if the statement is true and capital F if the statement is false. You will be given 5 seconds to type and send your answer on the comment section. Are you ready? Let's start. Number one, most habits, manners, and beliefs, and what we think are developed in the family. Is it true or false? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is true or capital T. Good job. Let's proceed to the next question. School is where we interact or socialize with administrators, teachers, and classmates. Is it true or false? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is true. Very good. Next question. Values can be categorized as formal and informal. Is it true or false? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is false. Nice one, class. Let's proceed to the fourth question. Because of enculturation, an individual knows the boundaries of his or her actions, words, and ideals. Is it true or false? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is true. Well done. Now, let's proceed to the last question. Self is not a product of social process. Is it true or false? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is false. Okay, congratulations everyone. The knowledge is truly embedded on you. Since you have the mastery on our previous lesson, we will proceed to our next topic this morning. Our topic is to analyze the forms and functions of social organizations. Our learning competencies we need to achieve this morning are the following. First, traces kinship ties and social networks. And second, describe the organized nature of social life and rules governing behavior. To start this, I prepare a simple springboard activity related to our topic. For the instruction, identify the word by guessing the missing letters and analyzing the given clue. So 5 seconds will be allotted to answer each item. Let's start. First picture. So what does the first picture represent? Clue number 1, number of people. Clue number 2, cluster. Clue number 3, unifying relationship. Do you know the word? Your 5 seconds starts now.
And the correct answer is group. Very good. Next picture. The picture represents what? Clue number one, people with a particular purpose. Clue number two, people who are work together. Clue number three, pursuing defined objectives. Do you know the word? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is organization. Good job. Next picture. So what does the picture denote? Clue number one, ability to influence. Clue number two, set direction. And clue number three, the art of motivating a group. Do you know the word? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is leadership. Good job, guys. Next, what does the picture indicate? First clue, complete control. Second clue, personal dominance. And third clue, dictates policies and procedures. Do you know the word? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is authoritarian. Okay? And for the last picture, what does the picture point out? Clue number one, inspire positive changes. Clue number two, enhance the motivation. And clue number three, influence followers. Do you know the word? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is transformational. Good job. Once again, congratulations for answering our short activity. The words presented on our previous activity will be tackled as we move on to our discussion today. Again, our topic is entitled, Analyze the Forms and Functions of Social Organizations. Uh, let us start this by defining terminologies. Group is defined as two or more figures forming a complete unit in a composition, according to Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Another definition, according to Collins Dictionary, a group of people or things which are together in one place at a time. Okay? Now, in addition, a group is a set of people who have the same interests or aims and who organize themselves to work or act together. Now, let's move on to social group. Okay? Uh, this is any set of human beings who either are, recently have been, or anticipated being in some kind of interrelation. Another definition of social group is two or more humans who interact with one another, share similar characteristics, and have a collective sense of unity. In strict sense of social group, Group is a collection of people interacting together in an orderly way on the basis of shared expectations about each other's behavior. As a result of this interaction, the members of the group feel a common sense of belonging. Viewed this way, a family, a village, a nation, or a political party or a trade union is a social group. Now, let's proceed to social relation. It is the connections that exist between people who have recurring interactions that are perceived by the participants to have personal meaning. Social relations is a term uh, for interactions between two or more people, groups, or organizations. Individual social relationships are composed of an immense number of social, physical, and verbal interactions that create a climate for exchange of feelings and ideas. Next, let us now discuss social organization. It is a pattern of a relationship between and among individuals and social groups. The kinship is structure of a culture or society, especially as constituted in the established network of rules 
of decent and res residence. Now, let's move on to um, another definition of social organization. And this is more of a characteristics of um, qualities such as sexual composition, leadership, structure, division of labor, communication systems, and so on. Okay? Now, let's proceed to the types of social organization. Formal organization is a type of group that is deliberately constructed and whose members are organized to achieve a specific goal. Churches, schools, hospitals, and companies are just a few examples. Modern formal organizations allow us to accomplish tasks in the most efficient way possible. On the other hand, we have informal organization. Okay, so this is the social structure of the organization as opposed to the formal structure of an organization. It establishes how an organization functions from a practical standpoint. The informal organization can work in harmony with the formal organization structure, parallel with it, or against with it. Okay? Now, on this part of the lesson, let us discuss the types of social group based from different point of view on the basis of contact, on the basis of identification, on the basis of rules and regulation, on the basis of structure, and on the basis of relation to society. Now, let us discuss first on the basis of contact. Primary groups are small clusters of people whose members share intimate and personal relationships, often serving as a support and comfort to those involved. They play a significant role in an individual's development. Family, friends, and love relationships are prime examples of this type of group. Now, the goal of primary group is actually the relationship themselves rather than achieving some other purpose. Next is the secondary groups. These are large groups whose relationships are impersonal and goal-oriented, and their relationships are temporary. Okay. Now, the secondary relationships involve weak emotional ties and little personal knowledge of one another. In contrast, the primary groups, the secondary groups don't have the goal of maintaining and developing the relationships themselves. Now, let's move on on the basis of identification. In-groups are social groups to which an individual feels he or she belongs. In short, an in-group is the group that an individual believes to be an integral part of who or he or she is. Okay? On the other hand, the out-groups refer to an individual doesn't define within the group. Okay? It is a group someone doesn't belong to. Often, we may feel disdain or competition in relationship to an out-group. Now, let's move on on the basis of rules and regulation. So, a formal group is composed when people come together to accomplish specific goals and objectives. An official group has particular structures and rules where responsibilities of the members of the group are defined. Activities carried by a formal group have specific guidelines which members of the group are supposed to adhere and follow to ensure good coordination. Some of the common formal groups that exist within the organization or community includes schools, um, churches, hospitals, governments, and civic organizations. Next is informal group. Uh, this is formed when two or more people come together to accomplish a specific task which mainly socially geared. The main idea behind the establishment of the informal group is the satisfaction of both personal and psychological needs. In addition, informal groups are not subjected to any rules and regulations 
in the organizations. There are no clear guidelines that govern the operation of an informal group. Now, let's all move on on the basis of structure. First is involuntary groups are those which are based on blood relationship or kinship. An example of an involuntary group is family. Voluntary groups are those group, um, the membership of which depends upon the sweet will of the individual. Their membership is not compulsory, rather voluntary. Social group is example of voluntary group. And the third type is called delegated groups, are those in which a man joins a representative or a number of people elected rather, the, rather by or nominated by some authorities. An example of this is a worker who represents the union in bargaining with administrators. Now, let us discuss on the basis of relation to society. Okay? Jimin Shaft is the type of group whose relationship is characterized by close, intimate, and personalities, mutual trust, and cooperation. Example of Jimin Shaft is family. Okay? On the other hand, we have also Jessel Shaft. Okay? A group which is characterized by competition, self-interest, efficiency, progress, and specialization of relationship. The corporation, universities, or social club is ideal example of Jessel Shaft. Now, let's move on to another part of our discussion, which is the basic elements of effective group work. The goal of any team to work as a unified unit to achieve a common goal. Um, the elements for a successful team promotes teamwork that can give any organization an advantage for success. So let me present to you the five R's of effective group work. First is responsibility. Contribute as much as you can and complete the work assigned to you. Second is reliance. Uh, we are helping each other to learn and complete the task. Third is relationship. We can encourage each other to share information, exchange viewpoints, discuss learning strategies, and form good partnerships. We are also to show acceptance to different personalities. Next is respect. Of course, we needed to be sensitive to each other's needs, feelings, position, and of course, be devoted to our mission. Okay? And last is reflection. Be aware of how much progress the group has made, how much you have contributed to the group, how well you have communicated with the members, and how well the project has been done. Another um, basic elements of effective group work are as follows. First is positive interdependence, which occurs when group members take collective responsibility for their group's success and coordinate efforts to achieve group tasks. Okay? Next is individual accountability. And successful group requires each member to be accountable for their tasks. Group members should also report their progress back to the group so each member knows how they are progressing as a whole. And third is constructive interaction. To achieve success as a group, each member needs to demonstrate a willingness to encourage and support other group members when needed. This might involve exchanging resources, providing feedback, and helping members who might be lagging. However, poor performance should not be overlooked and for sure, there are tips to address these types of issues. Now, let's move on to the concept of leadership. When we say leadership, this is the action of leading a group of people or an organization. 
the ability of an individual or a group of individuals to influence and guide followers or other members of an organization. Leadership involves making sound and sometimes difficult decisions, creating and articulating a clear vision, establishing achievable goals, and providing followers with the knowledge and tools necessary to achieve those goals. Leaders are found and required in most aspects of society, from business to politics to region to community-based organization. Now, let us discuss uh, the different types of leadership. First is authoritarian leadership. It allows a leader to impose expectations and define outcomes. One person um, can turn out to be a successful in situation when a leader is the most knowledgeable in the team. Although this is an uh, efficient strategy in time-constrained period, creativity will be sacrificed since input from the team is limited. And the authoritarian leadership style is also used when a team member needs clear guidelines. Second is participative leadership styles are rooted in democratic theory. The essence is to involve team members in the decision-making process. Participative leadership is also known as the democratic leadership as everyone is encouraged to participate. Okay? Third is delegative leadership style which focuses on delegating initiative to members and this is also known as laissez fair leadership. This can be successful strategy if the team members are competent take responsibility, and prepare engaging in individual tasks. Okay? Next is transactional leadership. Okay? So this style used transactions between a leader and his followers. Rewards, punishments, and other exchanges to get the job done. The leader sets a clear goal and a team member know how they will be rewarded for their compliance. Okay? Next is transformational leadership. This is the leader inspires his or her followers with the vision and encourages the, and empowers them to achieve it. In transformational leadership style, um, the leader inspires his or her followers with a vision and encourages them and empowers them to achieve it. The leader also serves as the role model for vision. Okay? Um, now, let's proceed to the qualities of a leader. Number one, they are self-aware and prioritize personal development. Effective leaders should focus on developing their emotional intelligence. Leaders that are work to refine this quality are more adaptive, resilient, and accepting of feedback from others. They are also effective listeners and open to change. Okay, next, they focus on developing others. So this leadership quality builds on the principle of the situational leadership theory, which suggests that effective leaders adapt to whether an individual or a group is ready, willing, and able to take a specific action. Third, they encourage strategic thinking, innovation, and action. As a leader, you have to look forward. You have to think about where the organization is going. Next, they are ethical and civic-minded. Strong leaders consider the ethical consequences of the decisions that they make for both their customers and their teams. And next, um, they practice effective cross-cultural communication. Respected leaders are able to clearly communicate with individuals, business units, and the entire company, and to the stakeholders 
outside of the organization. Now, let us try to review what has been discussed to you today. We define group, social group, social relation, social organization, and we also discuss the types of social organization. In addition, we also discuss um, the types of social groups such as on the basis of contact, identification, rules and regulation, structure, and relation to society. Next, we also discussed this morning the basic elements of effective group work. We also discussed the concept of leadership, the types of leadership, and the qualities of leader. Okay? So before we end our discussion, let us try to answer this. As the instruction says, choose the correct answer by typing the letter on the comment section. So you will be given again 5 seconds to answer the questions. Number 1. What do we call to two or more humans who interact with one another, share similar characteristics, and have a collective sense of unity? Is it A, group, letter B, social group, or letter C, social organization? Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is letter B, social group. Good job. Next, which of the following is not an example of a formal group? Letter A, school. Letter B, company. Or letter C, barcada. Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is letter C, barcada. Next, a bureaucratic corporation is the ideal example of what social group? Letter A, Jessel Shaft. Letter B, Jamin Shaft. Or letter C, none of the above. Your five seconds starts now. And the correct answer is letter A, Jessel's Shaft. Next. Which among the elements of effective group work were practiced if we ask ourselves how much we contribute for the group? Letter A, responsibility. Letter B, relationship. Or letter C, reflection. Your timer starts now. And the correct answer is letter C, reflection. Okay, next, it is also known as laissez fair leadership. What type of leadership is this? Letter A, delegative. Letter B, transactional. Or letter C, transformational. Your timer starts now. And the correct answer is letter A, delegative. Okay, congratulations in answering the questions correctly. Should you have any questions or clarifications, your follow-up teacher is willing to help and guide you. Thank you very much for listening to our discussion. Again, I am Peter Simon D. Belisario from Punturin Senior High School, your live stream teacher for this day. Keep safe and God bless everyone. A pleasant morning to you, class. Here we are again.